Caitlin Akins. Caitlin Akins was last seen on December 5, 2015. At the time of her disappearance, she was approximately 19 years old, 5 foot 4 inches tall, and 120 pounds, with blonde hair and blue eyes, and she was wearing a dark gray fleece pullover sweatshirt with a Bass Pro Shop emblem, black pants, and pink and black van shoes. Caitlin has a tattoo of five butterflies on her left forearm and a tattoo of three red stars bursting on the top of her foot. She wears eyeglasses with dark frames. Her nose and navel are pierced, and the right side of her lower lip is pierced. She also has gauge top piercings in her ears. Caitlin would be 26 years old today. Caitlin Michelle Akins was last seen on December 5th, 2015, in the area of Oak Crest Drive in Partlow, Virginia. She was visiting family in Spotsylvania County, Virginia, and was scheduled to fly home to Arizona on December 5th, 2015. However, she did not board her flight and has not been seen since. On December 7th, 2015, the Virginia Department of Transportation recovered a piece of blue luggage from a roadside ditch, unzipped, empty, and with a missing wheel. A wallet was located inside the luggage with Arizona identification belonging to Caitlin. Caitlin Akins was a happy-go-lucky teenager from Virginia. She was thoughtful, compassionate, and friendly. She was a family person who texted and spoke with her family all the time, particularly with her mother, Lisa, and her sister, Gabby. She was unique and had no problem just being herself, a trait her family loved about her. She was also extremely smart and a quick learner. In fact, Caitlin was so bright and hardworking that she doubled up on her coursework and was able to graduate high school at just 16 years old. Caitlin's biological father moved out of the state when she was just a toddler, and when Caitlin was seven years old, Lisa remarried to a man named James Branton. Caitlin's sister says that his relationship with Caitlin could be a little rocky while they all lived together, mostly because he was a bit more strict than Caitlin appreciated. The family says when her mom and stepdad split up that her relationship with James actually improved and got stronger. They all kept in friendly contact. Lisa eventually remarried again, and all the family relationships seemed to be going well. Caitlin moved to Arizona after high school to be with her fiancé, Amber. Amber and Caitlin were best friends and went to school together in Virginia. When Amber's family relocated to Arizona, the two stayed in touch over the years, turning their friendship into romance. In short, Caitlin had a beautiful life with people that she loved, so when something terrible happened to her, it was beyond devastating. Growing up, Caitlin was adventurous and free-spirited. She was constantly changing her hair and experimenting with different colors and styles. This hobby had grown into a passion, and Caitlin had made a plan to go to cosmetology school. Her first course was scheduled to begin December 7, 2015, and Caitlin needed one final piece of paperwork to make her acceptance official, her high school diploma, which happened to be at her mom's house all the way back in Virginia. Rather than mail it to her, they decided this would be the perfect time for a visit, and her sister Gabby had just given birth to her son, which made the trip even more perfect. Caitlin was excited to go get some cuddles from her new nephew. Caitlin arrived back home in Springfield, Virginia on December 1st, ready for four fun-filled days of visits with family and friends. She spent most of the time holding her nephew and spending quality time with her mom and sister. She also did her best to make time to visit with friends. The night before she was scheduled to fly back to Arizona, she spent the night at a friend's apartment after an evening of beer and board games. Since Caitlin was scheduled to start her cosmetology course on Monday, the 7th, she booked her flight back home to Arizona on Saturday, December 5th, at 5.40 p.m. out of the Reagan National Airport in Arlington. Her mother, Lisa, had to work that day, so they all agreed that Caitlin's former stepdad, James, would take her to the airport. James was happy to oblige, but he had to work in Fredericksburg at 3 p.m., so they agreed that Caitlin would arrive at the airport a little bit early and just hang out until her flight. 
Lisa dropped Caitlin off with James at 9.20 that morning before work, and they had a great chance to catch up at home for a few hours before they made the drive 60 miles from Portlow, where James lived, out to the airport. At 1.52 p.m. that afternoon, Lisa got a text from James. I dropped Caitlin off. A few moments later, at 2 p.m., Lisa got a text from Caitlin. I'm at the airport. Battery dying, so I won't be able to text for a bit. So it sounds like everything went as planned, but when Lisa continued chatting with James, things got a little confusing and became unclear to her. She asked how the traffic was, and that's when James tells her something that surprises her. I dropped her off at the Springfield Metro Station. She was going to take the metro to the airport since there is a stop at Reagan. This made Lisa start to think. Jason told her that Caitlin wanted to kill some time at the mall. Then she was just going to take the metro onto the airport. This didn't make any sense to Lisa because Caitlin wasn't familiar with the mall there. And then she was going to try to navigate through a train system with her luggage in tow. According to Lisa, this was very out of character for Caitlin. Lisa just couldn't figure out why she would do this and why Jason would even be okay with it. While Lisa was trying to talk herself down from a panic, she received another text from Amber, Caitlin's girlfriend in Arizona. Amber had gotten a text from Caitlin that she felt confused and upset by, and she wasn't returning her calls. Something came up. I'm not coming back today. I'll let you know when I get a new flight. I won't be able to text for a bit. At this point, Lisa was starting to freak out. Amber and Lisa called Caitlin over and over again with no response. Finally, at 7.15 that night, Caitlin responded to Lisa. I'm staying with a friend. I need some time alone. Amber's final text from Caitlin read, I can't come back. I cheated on you. Lisa knows at this point that something is definitely not right. She began calling everyone she could think of. She even called the airport and they confirmed that she never boarded her flight. Lisa attempted to report her as a missing person to the police, but they told her it was too soon and that if Caitlin wanted to be MIA, then she could be. Caitlin's family was worried sick and continued to search for her over the weekend. When Monday morning finally came, Lisa was at the police station. She got the feeling that they were considering her a runaway. But when she was filling out the missing persons report, a phone call came in about a mysterious find in a drainage ditch by a road crew worker. He'd unknowingly discovered the biggest clue, Caitlin's suitcase, scratched and missing a wheel, as if it had been thrown from a moving vehicle. It was found about 50 miles from the Springfield Mall. Inside the suitcase was Caitlin's wallet, her cash, her debit cards, and her plane ticket. But her clothes, her phone, and her high school diploma were missing. The finding of the suitcase quickly took the investigation from a possible runaway to an endangered missing person. Soon, the police set a 30 mile radius to search for Caitlin. They had multiple search parties, helicopters, heat sensors, and more to support the search. But they found nothing helpful. Then, the police checked the surveillance footage from the mall, metro station, and the airport. To their surprise, they found no video of Caitlin, James, or his car. The police also checked the phone records of James and Caitlin, and they found several discrepancies. At around 2 p.m., when Caitlin texted Lisa that she was at the airport, the phone connected to a tower 30 miles away from the airport, closer to James's house. Around the same time, when James texted Lisa that he had dropped Caitlin safely, his phone also pinged closer to his house, but not the same place. Caitlin's last text to Lisa was sent from Stafford, about 15 miles away from where officers found her suitcase. So it looks like Caitlin never made it to the airport or the mall. Police talked to those closest to Caitlin. Given that James was the last person to see Caitlin alive, he became the investigator's next stop. According to James, he dropped Caitlin off at Springfield Mall with her intending to take the metro to the airport. Initially, he cooperated fully with the investigators, and every time he shared his explanation of the events, 
They say his story stayed consistent. They requested that he take a polygraph test just to conclusively rule him out and move on to other options. He agreed, but his appointment time came and went, and James never showed. And he indicated that on the advice of his lawyer, he would not be participating in a polygraph after all. James told the detectives that he feared he was being looked at as a suspect, and he stopped all cooperation with the investigation from that moment forward. Without his cooperation, investigators were forced to execute a search warrant for James's home because that was Caitlin's last known location. His property was around 10 acres in a rural area near Fredericksburg. They searched the home as well as the property. They also seized his technology and vehicles. They found nothing that made them think anything happened at his home or property. Lisa brought up the fact that James also had another property that police didn't know about. Detectives were unable to get a search warrant for this property because James didn't live there and it was considered a rental property with a tenant. The tenant is James's mother. As for the technology they seized, they were unable to retrieve any information because James was very good at all the tech stuff. Everything he had, including his cell phone, were built and coded by him. They were all full of encryptions that he has to this day refused to help unlock. What they didn't need his help to uncover were those cell phone tower pings and they indicated that James's phone also never pinged anywhere near the airport and seemed to be at his home all day. Come to find out, while Caitlin's family was panicking and frantically trying to find her, James was obviously not concerned at all. He never called or texted Caitlin again. Lisa was shocked that someone that was supposed to be a loving father figure in Caitlin's life would just dismiss her disappearance like nothing ever happened. Let's not forget the fact that James had stated that he had to drop Caitlin off early at the airport because he had to be at work at 3 p.m. that evening. Well, James actually never showed up to work that day. He was a no-call, no-show, and he never went back to that job again or any other job for more than six months after Caitlin's disappearance. Some of Caitlin's friends told officers that James was abusive and he'd verbally abused Caitlin for every minor mistake. They speculated Caitlin's sexual preferences and lifestyle to be the reasons. Despite his very odd behavior, since there is a lack of physical evidence, investigators have been unable to label James as an official suspect to this day. They say they want to leave the door open for him to come forward with whatever information he has to clear up the discrepancies within his story. Some say maybe he is just covering up for Caitlin. Maybe she wanted to run away. Gabby, Caitlin's sister, believes there is a strong possibility that James is keeping secrets for her. All the family can do is think of scenarios that could have possibly happened. Maybe she was talking to someone online without anyone knowing. What if she met them and they turned out to be something different than she thought they would be? Someone evil. This is something the family may never know. There was an encrypted messaging app on her phone that police still haven't been able to get into. Lisa doesn't try to sugarcoat anything with James these days. She stated that he still will not speak to her or any of the investigators. She believes, down to her core, that James holds the key to Caitlin's fate in being found. In 2021, a billboard was put up in Caitlin's hometown seeking information about her disappearance. Lisa hopes it will pull on James's heartstrings, and maybe, just maybe, he will come forward and let the truth be known. The family relentlessly continues to search for Caitlin to this day, and they do everything they can to spread awareness about her case. Spotsylvania Crime Solvers announced a $2,500 reward for any credible leads to Caitlin's whereabouts. If you have any information about the disappearance of Caitlin Aikens, please call the Spotsylvania County Sheriff's Office at 540-582-7115. Tips can also be submitted at tips.fbi.gov. Thanks so much for watching my video. Please subscribe to Ride Around With Me and hear more missing persons cases. Here's another video to check out in case you missed it, and here's a playlist of all of my videos.